Hi guys, it's Janet. I have Jose Bonilla from Skyline College in California with me today. First question to you, the Bay Area is really active in social issues. How have current events affected your family and yourself? Um, I think it's affected us in, in a positive manner. It's, it's, it gives open for conversation. And sometimes uh, having these conversations is difficult to get them started. Uh, but what we're hearing it because it's right in our backyard. Uh, it, it's easy to bring that up uh, during, you know, dinner time and so on and discuss it and, and actually give the opportunity to hear what the family has to say, uh, not just what I'm going to lead the conversation with, but to hear what uh, my son and daughter have to say, what my wife has to say about it, because it affects us all differently. And uh, because being in the Bay Area, we, we are expected to um, see a lot of it so quickly not just seeing it on social media but it could be happening right outside our door and uh, to find out should we how do we get included do we want to be included we, we leave those those questions available that we can make our decisions on what to do we I'm happy to say that we all have the same uh, way of thinking or at least the outcome of these questions come out to the same answer but we have different routes of getting to those and that's what I really appreciate more because I can see the critical thinking that's occurring in uh, in my kids, and and then even the discussions that my wife and I will have, um, you know, we see the the what what's happening out there, what it's trying to do. We also see the negative aspects of it and how it's affecting other people um, who might not agree with it. So again, we 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 try to look at both sides to help us at least make a better decision. Um, there are times we know that maybe we should not be out there or we shouldn't be out there alone because of what could happen, especially later in the days when things can get out of control and we don't know who's doing it. Uh, you know, it's easy to point fingers of who was involved and who did that later on as we see recaps through uh, the media. But when it's happening, you don't know. It's, it's very similar to if you're playing in a football game and the play is running and you get hit from behind, you don't know who did it until you see the film later and then you can make the corrections. Uh, but, we have our discussions. I'm able to give a lot of uh, advice on how to be careful and to take care of themselves. Uh, but uh, they are also allowed to make their own decisions. And so again, we, we, we have the conversations and, and those are the things that it really, I think at the end will, will help out and, and, and make them better citizens, better people that they're allowed to think it and make decisions that can help them not only personally, but then the rest of the community. Being of Hispanic background, you travel a little differently whenever you have to travel out of state or even in state. Can you speak on that a little bit? Uh, that we have to carry more bags and luggage? Yeah, no. <laughs> um, yes, I do. Because of, just because of my name, um, it leaves me open to be questioned more about my status in this country. Uh, I'm a naturally born United States citizen, uh, but my name can bring more attention to me because uh, it, it's not your United States citizen name. It's very Latin. Uh, so I have to carry more documents with me to prove who I am and where I was born. Uh, I can go on trips and I know that I'm going to be the one who gets pulled over for extra uh, questioning. I'm going to be the one that has to meet with an immigration officer before I'm allowed to get back on a ship. Uh, and I don't take that lightly. I take that very seriously. So when I travel, I carry passports. I have a, a passport card. I have my ID. I carry my birth certificate. I carried my license, uh, my marriage license with me to prove that. Uh, because I don't want to be caught off guard. There's no, I don't carry a, a license, which is something we have to carry in California to drive, uh, that states that I am a naturally born citizen. That's what a, a passport is for. So I do carry those around. Uh, I joke around with my colleagues at work that in my briefcase, there is a copy of my birth certificate there in case I don't, I'm not able to get it. Uh, and in the recent years, there has been that, uh, that fear. And, but it's something that I've had all my life. Just again, because of my name, my status has always been questioned, jokingly and at times, and sometimes in a more serious manner. Um, do I get angry? Yes, I've gotten angry about it. Uh, and you know, I have to find ways to, to release that. But I also accept that I know it's gonna happen.
and there's something that I cannot change. So why am I going to give that more life? I'm just more prepared. As an athletic trainer, we always have to prepare for bigger uh, things. Something can happen. Well, why do we need to carry three pairs of crutches? Well, we don't know how many injuries can occur. We don't know what the size of the athlete is. But we carry those to make sure that we're ready and available. Same thing here. If I'm going to travel, I will prepare myself with these documents. Is it an extra hassle? Yes. But is it better than having to sit there and wait for things to come to me so I can prove it? I have it now available for me. So your son is a collegiate men's lacrosse player and yes. he's Hispanic. How has that been like for him? He's enjoyed it. Uh, he, uh, you wouldn't know he is, but if you're looking on appearance and you're looking on name, and again, as a lacrosse player, he's wearing a helmet. So uh, again, the facial uh, recognition is, is not uh, easily available for him. Uh, but I don't know. I, I can't say he's personally felt it. He's seen it indirectly where he has had teammates uh, who are of darker skin and just get called racially uh, insensitive names. And he has stood by their side and supported them. Um, the one thing he does notice that their biggest thing he's seen, though, is more of the, I guess you want to call it, uh, those who are privileged and those who are not, especially when he travels, he noticed that some uh, players could be teammates, could be opponents, uh, stay at better higher end hotels for, for better comfort or have more opportunities to, to have uh, a little more luxuries at where they stay as compared to maybe we're gonna stay in a motel room and uh, you know get ready for the next game. But I, I can't say that he spelt it directly because he, he doesn't feel it. He did has, uh, has some experiences where he's been in courses that uh, he's taken where it involves being um, uh, Hispanic courses in college. And he says that he doesn't look like everybody else in there in the sense that he doesn't look like he's Hispanic. And uh, I said to him, well, wait your turn. Wait until they hear who you are and, lead, and hear you speak. And especially when you start speaking Spanish, then you'll see it's more than that because that's who you are. So um, it's great that he plays a sport that uh, he enjoys. He plays a sport that hopefully, as we're starting to see here in California, it's a sport that's becoming integrated throughout all levels of California. So that is probably going to be more of a normal. We'll start seeing more uh, players who have a Hispanic surname or come from a Hispanic culture and play more. At, uh, he could even, you know, be an opportunity to be an ambassador for this game down into uh, into our home country uh, where my, my family comes from. But we'll see. What advice would you give diverse athletic trainers, especially the young professional or students in athletic training right now? Continue working to be the best you can. Get as educated as possible. Get as much experience as you can, especially in all sports. Don't just pick one and get to learn how to work with people and how to communicate. Um, we're all different. The one thing about athletics is that it all brings us together in one form or another, and we're all working for the same goal. But it's how we get to it. And I think if we're able to be open-minded and listen, because we're an opportunity, we're gonna have an opportunity to teach. And it might not be in athletic training, but it'll be in life where uh, we can teach them about being different or how we dealt with things because we come from a different culture or we have a different type of lifestyle that we can't just say you're wrong because of this but you know showing them how explaining why how you look at things how you are differently being open to have those conversations like i said earlier having these conversations is what is going to help us the most if we are not willing to talk about it and i think i really appreciate what you're doing in this particular uh, media you're doing uh, we can have these talks and fill people with information so they get to know who I am I get to know who you are and then we learn to work together and at the same time we get to live learn to live together and we appreciate each other uh, we all make judgments we, we all do it and and sometimes we we because of the 
fast pace of athletics and the work we have to do, we don't have time to have these conversations. And uh, I think that if we do, especially if we're sitting in the dugout during a double header in between the two games, if we have the opportunity to sit there, we can talk and have a conversation with the player, have a conversation with the coach that uh, maybe just came on staff to get to know it. All of a sudden, the differences we had, whatever it could be because of our upbringings, are gone. And we're just, you know, two bodies sitting in the dugout waiting for the next game, and hopefully we can be successful in that one. So be able to conversate, talk, let to know people who, who you are, and you get to know who they are. That's the biggest thing. We're not going to change the world in one day. It's not going to happen. But if we go one step at a time, one conversation to another, things will will come out really well and you're going to be in a very nice place. So Jose, next couple minutes is all for you, your closing statement. Closing statements. The world has changed and we have to accept it. Uh, the term, well, we used to do it this way doesn't exist anymore. We don't have the opportunity to do that, but reflect on what we can do now to make life better. Uh, I'm seeing at my end that the athletic trainer is now being looked more as an equal in the athletic department. And we're getting the opportunity to help lead in a crusade that we've never expected to, to, to come across. And we are coming out shiny. We are leading and we're leading by setting things up and protecting each other. Continue to work, continue to educate yourself and have conversations. Jose, thank you so much for taking the time, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, thank you, Janet. Take care. Bye. Bye.